Hey guys, it's Anne. Welcome to the channel. If you're new here, this channel is all about indoor home vermicomposting. I tend to do a lot of things in regards to myth busting and then also tutorials on how to fix your problems. I'm not sure if you can see this, but there are quite a bit of fruit flies or fungus gnats, whatever the case may be, in this bin. And so before I even get started, I'm going to show you what I do about fungus gnats. Okay, super simple. I have just a ricotta cheese container, can be any sort of container that holds, you know, two or three cups of liquid. Uh, make it about half full of water, add a couple of shots of vinegar to it, and one little dab of dish soap. You can see the bubbles there on top, those will go away in a little bit. But I'm just going to leave this in the area and believe it or not, it will attract all of the gnats and pretty soon they will all end up in here and will quit breeding and being an annoyance. All right, now on to today's topic. Why do worm bins fail? So why do worm bins fail? This bin is my European night crawlers, or at least half of them. I have uh, taken half of them and put them in the other part of this 55 gallon drum. I think that there was just way too many worms for this bin, so I started moving some of them out. Um, finding a little bit of uh, shredded plastic here, uh, in case you didn't ever have this experience, the worms will kind of push things out to the top that they are not interested in, and which is really good for me because then I can uh, come through and pick them out and uh, that way I don't have to sift them out later. Okay, so what we're talking about today while we're looking through the European night crawlers is why do bins fail? And in my experience, one of the biggest things I can say that I had problems with in the beginning was basically when you're new, you do not have enough worms to do what you want to do. So you get a bin that is maybe the size of a five gallon uh, bucket or maybe twice as big and you put in a pound of worms and your expectations are super high that they are going to eat. So the first reason why your bin may fail is because you have overfed it. And so you do have to be careful. And I'm not just telling you problems, I am giving, going to give you some solutions. So one of the solutions to that is that basically if you fed too much food, you can do one of two things. You can either pull the food back out again, or you can go ahead and add everything to a larger bin. If it's like squishy food and you don't think you can do that, you can, you know, put it into a larger bin for a while and then they can basically double in size and then you can use up the food in a longer period of time. So I'm going to start at the end we did not feed at to see where I'm getting to and drying out this bin and I've got some bits of big clumps of the coconut coir that is, is not broken up yet. Looks like I have a potato or ginger or something here. But I did split this bin up because I thought the worms were just too crowded. So, good. Looks like we're, they're starting to depopulate that particular area. It is a little bit compacted here, but not too bad. I've been, I think it was almost a month since we've been down here again. All right, so we'll move things over. I just don't think this is gonna run in the wedge way very well. I'm, I'm hoping now that I've removed half the worms, hopefully it'll start fixing itself, but we will see. So one of the other things that you have a problem with with new bins is moisture, either too much or too little. And it's easy to get away, you know, to have this problem. It's very easy to end up with too much moisture or too little moisture because, you know, the weather impacts how much it evaporates, etc. So one of the problems with moisture is that, at least I have problems with moisture, is the change of seasons. You know, I'll be going along and I'll think I'm knowing what I'm doing, and then all of a sudden, bam, 
the air conditioner kicks on and sucks all the moisture out of the house. Or at the other end of the season, the furnace kicks on and sucks all the moisture out of the house. So I usually, and then when it kicks off, then I have the opposite problem where I've been trying to mitigate the uh, problem and then all of a sudden I don't have a problem and then everything's wet again. <laughs> so yeah, you just really have to um, keep an eye on things so that the moisture doesn't get out of hand. But if it does get out of hand, then there are a couple things that you can do. And I am seeing some of that Amazon tape that's not dissolving, so I'm picking that out. I think uh, some of it does dissolve and some of it doesn't, and I'm thinking maybe it's not worth me picking it out again. I saw that Patrick did something on his channel about the Amazon tape, and I'm not sure what the difference is. Some of it goes away completely and the rest of it doesn't. So I think I'm gonna, you know, I'm agreeing with him that it's just not worth it. Might as well pull it off before. All right, so ways to fix the moisture. I'm gonna put you down here so you can see the cool things that are coming up in the feeding zone. So we've got a carrot that is sprouted here. And uh, this actually will turn into another carrot, but it'll probably go to seed and give you carrot seeds rather than more carrots. So we're going to let the worms play with that for a while, but then that will probably just uh, become worm food. I don't really want my own seeds. But from what I understand, you can do the same thing with onions, plant them in and get sprouts, and then you can cook with them kind of like scallions. Smelling some onion here. I know I had a large onion that, uh, yeah, these potatoes, these unfrozen potatoes, they take forever. It, they've been in here for a month, and they are nowhere near breaking down. Luckily, the worms did have, oh, this is cool. Check this out. This is just strips of carrot, but it's trying to root. Isn't that cool? Maybe the worms will grow me something cool. I don't know. But that is one of the reasons why you should freeze your food, because otherwise it will come back and be zombie vegetables. It'll try and be alive again. So moisture, getting the moisture fixed. So one of the best ways I have personally found that when my moisture gets out of whack is that, so if it's too wet, one of the best things to do is if you have any uh, peat moss or cocoa coir, then you can add dry and that will completely sop up any excess moisture. Now, um, you can of course add shredded paper, dry shredded paper or shredded cardboard if you don't have um, coconut coir or peat moss. If you have the opposite problem and things are too dry, one of the things that you can do is have a really wet feeding so maybe puree the food that you're going to feed. Or if you don't have any food that's, you know, able to be pureed, then you can also take some very wet shredded paper and add that in with the feedings. And then that should also help. Okay, looks like we're doing good here. I think there, that was part of the food and we knew that wasn't going to be, I just did, I did watch the video from last time. So yeah, that food did not, doesn't look like it made very much progress at all. Luckily, they've got some very squishy fast food for today that I will be able to feed them. So just in case they are hungry because I gave them slow food, they'll get a quick bunch of fast food. All right, let me switch you around here. I'm gonna start gathering up all this uh, slow food so we can put it in the bottom. Get it all in one place that way maybe the uh, degrading fast food will help it but yeah just making sure it's crumbly so another thing that could make your bins fail um, with this one it's not a problem because there is no lid but in the event that you did have a lid one of the things that could cause you a problem is no air and i know that sounds like common sense, but I've had a situation or two where I've been using cat buckets as kind of a grow up bin for cocoons and whatnot. And I didn't take the lid off. I was like, well, I'm just gonna kind of leave it propped open and that way it'll be fine. But then, I don't know, I got sidetracked and something made the lid um, close and then the worms did 
die. I went to open it again, saw that it was closed, and worst smell ever. And uh, I lost that batch of cocoons because there was no air in there and they either the off-gassing from the the food or something and then of course they they died so you got to make sure you have enough ventilation if you do have lids then you know make sure that the holes aren't blocked by anything i've also kind of forgot that back when i had the diy system the, when i was running it the first time i did have a lid and i did have holes and uh you know, I put them on the side of the bin, so that was kind of hard to block. But if I had put them on the top and then accidentally put something on top of the bin, then I could have suffocated them as well. Most of my bins do not have any sort of lid anymore. I've just learned that the worms are much happier um, if the top of the bin is a little bit drier, and then they stay put and I don't have any problems. Maybe we will get a worm ball today. There was some leftover pumpkin, some old onions here. Looks like we're gonna have a lot of food left over. Lots of, lots of slow food. So another thing is um, the bin can become very compacted. And what happens when it gets very compacted is that the rotting food gives off gases like ammonia, and uh, methane and basically the the gases will you know kill the worms so that is one of the reasons why I do my fluffing some people don't agree with fluffing that's fine but I run some very deep bins this is a foot deep I'll put the metric equivalent over there but it's very deep for a worm bin and if this gets very packed down it is totally possible that the rotting food will off gas and kill the worms. So for me, any slight annoyance, you know, once a month that the worms will have is, is fine because it will save their life from, you know, being exposed to toxic gases. All right, hopefully we're getting close to a worm ball here. Okay, this is where the pumpkin was. Yep, all the seeds. Nothing's sprouting yet, though. Oh, we just weren't in time. Got a good concentration of worms, but no actual worm ball here. Yep, that's okay. Yes, I'm disappointed, but there's a lot of worms in here. Hard to get them all organized into a, a good worm ball. But there, I mean, you can see the, the quality of the, not the quality, the density of the worms here is pretty high. So they're doing good. But let's get them some more food here. And then hopefully we can get a worm ball next time. That onion, oops, <laughs> look at that. They're, they're literally crawling under there and nesting underneath there. Uh, forbidden food indeed not so much all right so we're going to put back the slow food here at the bottom hopefully that will encourage it to uh, start degrading then they're going to get a bunch of fast food here and they're going to get some weird fast food at that I don't remember if I've ever fed them spinach before, but they're getting some pretty normal cantaloupe. But this is bubble tea bubbles uh, that uh, expired by a couple years. And then this spinach was canned spinach that uh, was apparently expired for five years. <laughs> was not doing my rotation of stock in my cabinet, apparently. We've got more shredded carrots, more cantaloupe. They really, really seem to want to uh, grow some carrots there. Okay, so we talked about the compaction part, and the next part is not having enough bedding, or just feeding food and never feeding any bedding, which in a stroke of irony, they're not going to get any bedding this time because we gave them a lot last time. But if your bin starts to feel sticky, you can't, it's not doing it now, 
But if you go into your bin and it, all of the, the casting stick to your fingers, kind of like uh, paste, then there might be too high of a concentration of castings in there. It might not just be a moisture problem. It might be actually um, that it needs more bedding to kind of dilute the castings that do exist. So, you know, every couple of times when you feed, you should always try to add some bedding in the form of shredded paper or coconut coir. Going on two years for this pumpkin stem. Not even close to breaking down as far as I can tell. Okay, here we are again. The bin's been fed and fluffed, and we've had a little bit of a talk about what can you do to make your bins more successful. And if you like the European Nightcrawler bin, I have a playlist that I will mark right over there. And if you've already seen that, YouTube thinks you're going to like that video right over there. All right, guys, thanks for hanging out with me and my worms, and everybody, have a good day.